Welcome to this presentation on the impact of irrigation on providing quality putting green surfaces. As a brief review, the first means of irrigating greens was at St. Andrews well over a hundred years ago. A well was dug next to each green to provide a water source. Early sprinklers might have looked something like this, comprised of an impact sprinkler mounted on a mobile device that allowed it to be placed manually on and around the green. Early irrigation systems that were fixed, like this single row system on a golf course in Chile, had impact sprinklers manually moved to the various valves. Although manual sprinkler head systems work, precision was dependent on a crew member to move these sprinklers around on an appropriate schedule. Given the error in timing, greens could end up being too dry, as shown here, or what more commonly occurred where the greens were overwatered. As technology has developed quickly over the last couple of decades, so too have irrigation systems. Now irrigation systems can be managed from desktop computers, and two from notepads and phones. These new systems gather considerable information from weather stations, soil moisture measurements, to evapotranspiration, which all contribute to delivering water in a precise fashion to a golf course. The sprinklers can be controlled individually and targeted to specific areas, for example, around this bunker complex. These irrigation systems can water large areas or large acreages of turf, and each one of these sprinklers can be individually controlled. These new irrigation systems can cost well into the seven figures. The ability to provide water in a precise manner has contributed to that aesthetically pleasing look of golf courses. But providing a good golf course is more than just the look, it's the playability specifically the greens that are important. As a professional golfer has developed, along with the equipment advancements, they've been able to hit the ball much further in length, and on golf courses, length becomes less of a challenge. The putting green provides the last defense against the onslaught. Factors that can make a green or hole more difficult is pin placement, which is discussed in this module as well as slope. But more specific to the green's playability is speed and firmness. Green speed is also discussed in greater detail in a separate section in this module. What we focus on is green firmness, how it is measured, and the interaction with soil moisture or irrigation practices. This picture was taken at the Masters in the mid-2000s. The golfer is Ernie Els. To get started, as we noted in the module on soils and putting green construction, soils comprise volumetrically of solid component, air and water pores, and organic matter. The air and water portions are evenly distributed between them. We can measure soil moisture content with devices like this one shown here made by Spectrum Technology. Hopefully this device looks familiar because it was discussed in the uh, module on irrigation. So if you need to review or see how they work, please consult uh, that module. In conjunction with measuring soil moisture, we also need to measure firmness. The device or firmness meter shown here is used on the PGA Tour. Again, to see how this device works in other firmness type measurements, um, see the uh, section on greens, firmness, and speed in this module. Just as a point of interest, the yellow device shown here is called a Clegg Impact Tester, which is a similar in operation of the firmness devices described prior. But this is the official device used on athletic fields. Sports fields where football and soccer, for example, are played, this device is used to measure surface hardness and is related to player safety. For example, there's a range where the field is considered safe. The Clegg meter measures in what is called G-max. So if you are around sports, you may hear that term G-max used in referring to field hardness and the safety of the field. 
As we're trying to relate soil moisture and firmness, we also measure green speed to develop a model of what we want our greens to be. Relating firmness and soil moisture, there is a range where there's an optimum soil moisture level that produces the desired firmness. In general, the drier the soil, the firmer the green. But there is a range. For example, you can be too dry, and more obviously, you can be too wet, which can reduce green firmness. Being too wet from rain and such is intuitive. Being too dry is not. As an analogy, we can use an ocean beach. This picture is from the south of Portugal. As we approach the beach, where the waves do not lap up on the sand, it is rather difficult to walk through the sand because it's dry and unstable. We tend to sink into it. As we get closer to the ocean and where the water laps up on the beach, the sand is wet but firmer, much easier to walk along the beach than it is in the foreground. As another analogy, on golf courses, you may see staff members watering bunkers, which to the average golfer may seem kind of crazy. But by adding a light amount of water to dry bunker sand, you can firm it up and actually reduce the likelihood of the ball creating a fried egg or become buried in the sand. In the two previous slides showing how sand can become too dry and less stable and firm, putting greens on the other hand can become dry but due to their root production are more stable. Now you may think if I turn the water off I can dry a green down and make it real firm like this research green. Actually, this green is not firm as you may think. Contributing to green's firmness, besides moisture, is traffic or all management practices like mowing, rolling, etc. that compress or add firmness to the surface. If your green looks like this, which is basically dead and not a good sign in itself, you are not doing much to it, so it's not as firm as you think. The second thing is the green speed again on the surface is not as fast as you may think. You may think dead grass puts fast but actually the lack of smoothness produces a slower putting surface. When we are looking at firming up greens especially during tournaments we are using all the data we have collected from firmness meters, soil moisture meters, and also from green speed data to build a model where we want to be with regard to our greens prior to a tournament. Looking at this graph, which is actually based on years of collecting data, we can develop guardrails represented by the red hash lines in relation to soil moisture levels on the y-axis, the day on the x-axis, and on the right, firmness, which is increasing as you move downward toward the x-axis. If, for example, we just shut off the water and soil moisture levels were allowed to drop below the threshold, the firmness would increase, but maybe to a point where we were losing control. In other words, maybe the greens were becoming too firm uh, at this point of the tournament. And we may need actually see the turf begin to die or suffer. To correct this, you may think that you would add just a little bit of water. But unfortunately, to raise the moisture level back up and reduce the firmness, you would have to basically water to field capacity at or above 25%. This would result in starting over and trying to dry down process to get firmness. Actually, this is what would happen if during a period of uh, we got rain during a weather event. The result would be that your greens would not be very firm going through the week. Actually, to gain the firmness, you want to be at, by say Sunday, you may actually need to add a little water through the week to maintain the greens within the firmness guardrails. So what does it look like when you lose control? Maybe something like this. Or something like this. Actually, the last, this picture in the previous picture were taken from uh, golf courses that were hosting major tournaments. 
Understanding what firm greens are and how to accomplish it is not always intuitive.